very simple example I was uh, telling you before is the following. Consider an energy made in this way. The energy of a function which I call U is equal to an expression of this type where W is an energy density per unit length. Here we are in one dimension. And uh, for instance, you can imagine, you can imagine a bar hmm, in which U is an axial displacement. And uh, we consider boundary conditions of this type. So we, uh, we keep one of the ends fixed, and to the other we give a given displacement, uh, beta L. And uh, no forces, no external forces. So this is a very simple example. And uh, we wish to uh, solve this problem. Uh, it means to find the equilibrium equations. This is a very simple example by minimizing the energy. So, uh, the classical way of the calculus variations is the following. I consider a perturbed configuration. Eta is uh, the perturbation. And uh, which uh, I, uh, I am rather informal about regularity now. But let's say has the same regularity as U and uh, leaves the end of the bar unchanged. So I require that eta of zero equal eta of L equal zero. And uh, uh, to minimize uh, this energy means to require that uh, this difference be greater or equal than zero for every perturbation. Okay, so just by definition, this is something like And I wanted that this be greater or equal than zero. Uh, I assume that uh, this uh, W is uh, strictly convex. Hmm? Strictly convex means uh, this, that uh, W put the X because of this can be any function is uh, strictly equal than W of U prime plus the derivative at u prime multiplied by eta prime. This is, uh, uh, I am using the sim same symbol, but uh, this is uh, the derivative with respect to x, and this, uh, this is uh, the der derivative with respect to y. We shouldn't uh, make a confusion about that. And uh, this is a very simple fact that everybody knows that uh, if this is a strictly convex function, this is uh, the equation of the tangent at the point u prime. Hmm? And uh, all the rest of the graph, uh, so this may, uh, must be true for every eta prime different from zero, all the rest of the graph stay, stays above. Hmm? Okay. So we use uh, this uh, property of convexity here, and we state that this is greater than the integral to zero to L, w prime the of x multiplied by eta prime of x. W prime, thank you, in the x. Okay, and uh, this uh, must uh, be true for every 
eta which satisfies this condition. But this condition can be written, I will write it here because we will need it, uh, we will need it in the following, the following way, the integral of eta prime is equal to zero. And I write, uh, since I am here, I will write also the corresponding boundary condition for u, u prime of x equal to beta L. So it is convenient to write uh, uh, this condition, the boundary condition. Also, we lose something, we lose a, a rigid translation, but this is not important. Uh, there is a lemma in the calculus which is, uh, uh, I will put here, if, uh, the, if it, uh, we well, this has to be a constant. So this, uh, this greater or equal to zero implies W prime u prime of x constant. And uh, we know, I not explain this, that uh, this derivative of the energy density is exactly the axial force in the bar. So here I am right that I am writing that sigma is equal to w prime of u prime of x. And this is a constant. And of course, uh, this, is, uh, mm -hmm. this is trivial because uh, uh, we know that uh, uh, this difference, uh, let's state it formally, uh, when we make the calculus of variations, we consider variations, which means that uh, uh, we consider E of u plus eta is equal to E of u plus something which uh, we call the first variation of u. Uh, just to speak of a calculus of variation, maybe it is b better to put here a scalar epsilon, which is a coefficient of smallness, which we are free. To, uh, then to reduce to zero. So uh, I put the epsilon here because this, this is uh, the linear part of what I call the first variation of the energy in U uh, with respect to the perturbation eta plus something of higher order. And uh, this first variation is defined to be as a uh, as, uh, you can deduce from there is the limit uh, when epsilon, uh, so epsilon eta here, when epsilon goes to zero of one over epsilon uh, times the integral, uh, the energy of u plus epsilon eta minus the energy of u. Hmm? Okay, if you take this difference, you divided it by epsilon, you get this uh, plus uh, O of epsilon divided by epsilon. When you t take the limit, this disappears. What this is exactly the first variation. So well, this is a, a necess necessary condition for a minimum, huh? not sufficient in general. Uh, and uh, we will give a supplementary definition. I mean, this is here, but we will use it in more complicated uh, circumstances. We will uh, define an equilibrium configuration. Configuration. Let me say first what is a configuration now. Configuration is just uh, uh, an element of the, um, of the domain of the energy. So in our case, for this moment, configuration is just the displacement function u. An equilibrium configuration 
is a configuration for which the first variation is greater or equal than zero for every eta, for every perturbation. Okay? We call this equilibrium configuration. Of course, uh, an energy minimum has to be an equilibrium configuration because uh, uh, we said that uh, this greater or equal than zero is uh, a necessary condition for a minimum. But uh, it is not true that an equilibrium configuration is always an energy minimizer. So it is a one-way uh, dependence. For us, uh, an equilibrium configuration is a configuration with W prime U prime equal to the axial force of the bar. But if we have uh, a strictly convex function, it's a uh, uh, function W, uh, its derivative W prime is uh, strictly monotonic, is strictly increasing. So uh, if uh, a monotonic function, this is W prime now, as a function of U prime, is strictly in increasing, for every value of W prime of U prime, you have one and, and one value of U prime. That means that uh, not only W prime of U prime, but also U prime has to be a constant. Okay. So at this point, uh, we can simplify our uh, definition of the energy because since uh, this is a constant, we can write uh, the energy as simply this constant W of prime multiplied by F. And uh, which is the value of U prime? Uh, this is also very simple. We can read it from here because if U prime is a constant, U prime is equal to beta. So the answer to our problem is that uh, the minimizer of this energy is the homogeneous deform with u prime equal to beta. Okay. This is something that every student of engineering uh, knows or should know after the third year. <laughs> so uh, this, uh, as I told you, is uh, just a pretext to introduce the uh, Let me see. If something about that. Uh, the, uh, the thing which I, I pictured here, I, here I have two disconnected sets. Yes. Yeah. No, uh, I simply say, when you consider a body which is not fractured, you say that uh, the energy is, is W of U prime, and you don't uh, worry about how this U prime has been produced. You simply say, if I have a U prime, this is his energy. And now I am saying the same, if I have a broken, uh, his energy is W prime of U prime plus the energy. This is just a definition. Uh, I forgot uh, to say uh, what is a jump, just to be. The jump means that uh, we consider exactly like here functions in which there are singular points at which the function uh, has a, uh, a right limit and a left limit. There are several types of discontinuities for the functions. And uh, here we are uh, assuming that the uh, discontinuity is uh, of the jump type. That means that there are these uh, limits from the right and from the left. And the jump, which I uh, denote exactly this way, the jump at x, is equal to the difference of the two. Okay. 
Okay, so this is what I denoted here by this square bracket. Uh, what happens is that uh, uh, at this point, for instance, we have that the two limits are equal, hmm? so I don't have any jump. But there is a, a singular set of points at which, at which the jump is different from zero. And uh, I also make an assumption of this jump, which is important. You see here, the jump is positive, hmm? because the u plus is greater than u minus. A negative jump would be something like that. Okay. And uh, this would, means, would mean, in a one-dimensional context, would mean interpenetration of the bar. And we uh, don't wish to have this. So we exclude uh, this fact by assuming that uh, you jump, uh, the jump of you <coughs> is always positive. Uh, let's say greater or equal than zero, because equal zero means uh, no, no jump. Hmm? So uh, this is also a big uh, change to introduce uh, uh, this uh, inequality in our problem, because this means uh, that our functional is not any more regular as before. That means uh, it is not true anymore that uh, the energy of u is equal to the energy of minus u, or there are boundaries inside the, the domain of definition of the functional. In this situation, uh, the requirement of, on the first variation is uh, that, uh, okay, I didn't say this before, but uh, here I wrote directly greater or equal than zero. If we go back to our preceding examples, because uh, eta prime can be replaced uh, by minus eta prime without any problem in our preceding examples, because uh, the set of definition of the energy was a linear space, this uh, less or equal than zero becomes equal to zero in our preceding example, okay? But now we have to keep the inequality because we are not sure that the minimum is exactly the point at which uh, this, um, this equality can be verified. Just to, to show you an example, suppose that you have an energy, one, uh, the case is one dimensional, you have a function to minimize of this type here, okay? So the minimum is where the first derivative is zero. Okay, this is clear. But if I am not uh, minimizing on the whole set, that is on the whole straight line, huh? on the whole real line, but on a subset, for instance, if I minimize in this subset, u greater than some, uh, some number a, the minimum is here. And here, the first derivative is not zero. It's positive, okay? So any time we have inequalities, in this case we have inequalities which defines the set of definition because we, we have u greater than a, huh? u prime, okay, u prime greater than a, we must expect that uh, some inequalities be possible. So in this case, it is important to put uh, greater or equal rather than equal. The whole, uh, the whole um, analysis of fracture is full of these uh, small technical details. That means that uh, um, if we wish to get uh, good results uh, from energy minimization about fracture mechanics, we must be very careful to perform the minimization carefully. Because if we forget some details, we will get, we will get uh, false results. So here, uh, we have to keep the inequality. Okay. Now, uh, then, let us write the difference of the energies. The difference of the energies is uh, this piece plus gamma, which multiplies the number of the jumps of u plus eta minus the number of the jumps 
of you. Okay, so we have to minimize the dysfunctional with uh, this extra piece. And let's see uh, what happens. And here, uh, of course, uh, I say that the new conditions are these. Hmm? Are these two. Uh, so uh, I am free to take uh, uh, the perturbations as I wish, uh, provided that they satisfy this equation. Hmm? So, at first, let me take smooth perturbations. Smooth uh, it means that uh, this term is not there. Hmm? So this is my first choice. In particular, I can write my inequality, that this is greater or equal than zero, for every smooth perturbation. Okay, uh, so in this case, these two numbers are equal, huh? because if I perturb without any discontinuity, the number of the, the discontinuities doesn't change. So I am back to what I wrote before. Hmm? I am back to this piece without this one, with uh, this condition without this part. Hmm? So I draw exactly the same uh, result as before, that is to say, W prime of U prime constant and U prime constant. Okay, so this is the result of uh, uh, considering this particular type of perturbations. Okay, so at uh, this point, uh, I can uh, write uh, U prime without uh, uh, the X here because it is constant. And I can use the, the, uh, the convexity of W prime to write this inequality without the x. So let me write this. Now I have this plus. Plus gamma times. But uh, because uh, u prime uh, is constant, uh, here I can write, uh, I can take w prime out of the integral, w prime of u prime, this way. And from here, I deduce that the integral of u prime is minus the sum of the jumps. Hmm? Sorry? Oh, oh sorry. Thank you. Uh, okay, so I have minus w prime of u prime multiplied by the sum over j, uh, the jumps of it. Plus gamma, and so on. And now, we see that uh, uh, there is a special case which uh, uh, we can see immediately. That is, mm. no, U prime is constant because I am uh, integrating of. of uh, mm over zero L, but uh, I am integrating what is uh, the regular part of the derivative, this and this, okay? Uh, of U is equal to L W of U prime plus the sum gamma uh, number of U, okay? And uh, 
uh, w of u prime, I can write ju uh, just by the convexity of the function w that uh, this is uh, greater than w of beta plus w prime of u prime uh, mm, uh, u prime of u prime of u prime, okay, uh, w prime, sorry, of beta, u prime minus beta, plus gamma number of jumps, okay? And because uh, uh, I didn't say, but uh, when I, um, defined the energy W, I assumed that W of zero is equal to zero, and that W prime of zero is equal to zero. W zero, uh, of zero equal to zero means just to take an origin for the energy. Eh? The energy is always uh, defined to within a constant. And with W prime of zero means that uh, what I chose was the information the configuration that I chose at the origin is the one with uh, no axial force, okay? So w, uh, w of beta is greater than zero because we have a, const a convex function which is zero at the origin with the derivative. So we can write that this is greater than L W prime of beta uh, U prime minus beta Plus, and uh, this number, uh, I am considering now in this uh, calculation, I am considering the case of a mm, configuration with jumps. Hmm? So there, is, uh, there are jumps, at least one. So uh, this number is at least one. And uh, I can write here that uh, this is greater or equal than gamma. Okay? So uh, what I find uh, from uh, this uh, Okay, u prime minus beta and uh, u prime minus beta from here is minus the sum of the jumps. Hmm? Oh, L u prime plus beta is greater than is, uh, sum of the jumps. Uh, uh, runs uh, in the form. Uh, let me make a picture here. Assume that uh, uh, u is not constant, u prime. So you ha we have in two different pieces two different values of u prime. That y then you simply take an eta uh, with the integral zero made this way, you take the integral and you see that it cannot be zero. And this is independent of the fact that here it is continuous or no. Huh? This is independent of the fact that it is continuous or not in between. Okay? Why? Ah, no, no, uh, this is wrong, simply. <laughs> the picture, is, I made a picture this way because there was something written about, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 okay. Yes? This one? This one? Yes, but I will come to that now. Okay, you are right. Of course, if you wish to minimize, uh, uh, I can answer immediately to you, uh, because if you have two or three more fractures, you just uh, take a fracture which is equal to the sum of the, of the two or three, and you have a uh, smaller energy, so, okay. Uh, okay, so we came to this, uh, uh, to this, um, 
to this inequality. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I, ha I am obliged to, to anticipate something to answer you. Uh, this gamma is uh, uh, the parameter introduced by Griffith substantially, and, uh, in a, uh, and it is a material constant. For Griffith, because he is not that in more than one dimension, it was a, a density for unit uh, uh, length or for unit area, depending if you are in two or three dimensions. But uh, as we uh, will see in the ne uh, next lectures, uh, this uh, question is not any more important. I mean, in this first mo model, you just consider it a, mat a material constant uh, depending on the material. But uh, the reality is, of course, more complicated. Mm. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, uh, this is not, not true. It's, uh, what you get from the form of W is that uh, the integration by parts formula, which is uh, uh, the integral of U prime is equal to the difference of values of U uh, from 0 to L, here has an extra term uh, due to the jumps. So you have to add the minus the sum of the jumps. Because uh, you just integrate in every regular piece and then you add the jumps. And here there is no gamma. This is just, uh, this is just uh, mathematics. This is just a formula of integration by parts. So there is no gamma here. I, I have lost, I must look at the notes, but I have lost the consequentiality of what I, I was saying. Okay, we are here. So, uh, now uh, we will take a fractured configuration, hmm? uh, a fractured eta, sorry. And uh, so we Okay, so now I take a perturbation, eta, which has only one jump at a jump point, jump point of view. Just one jump at a, at a jump point of view. So in this case, this sum is just uh, substituted by a simple eta. Because I am at a jump point of view, so here is the function u. I take a perturbation uh, at a jump point of u. So I, I take an eta, this is u. Eta is discontinuous here. Because of this, uh, there is a, this smallness parameter, this uh, perturbation can be as small as, as we please, the sign of the perturbation is free. Hmm? We have the inequality which, uh, okay, which says uh, this. Okay. Uh, but this inequality transferred to the perturbation doesn't say that uh, the jump of eta has to be zero, but uh, says simply that uh, the jump of u plus the jump of eta has, be, has to be greater or equal than zero. Okay. So if uh, we have, uh, if we put this eta on a jump points, on the jump points, its sign is free. 
if this eta is sufficiently small. But if you, uh, we put it on a point which is not a jump point of view, then it, ha it has to be greater or equal than zero. Okay? So we are putting it now on a jump point. And on a jump point, uh, the sign of eta has to be, uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, is free. So we have, in this particular case, we have here minus w prime of u prime multiplied by the jump of eta plus gamma, because uh, gamma jump uh, number of jumps of u. Uh, no, plus nothing, because uh, since I, I put uh, this perturbation on a jump point of eta, this number is equal to this. Hmm? I did not change the, the number total of the total number of jumps. So I have this. So I have that e, u plus eta minus e plus u is equal to this. I wish uh, that uh, the first variation to be equal, greater or equal than zero then this has to be zero. Huh? This has to be zero. So we have that uh, w prime of u prime equal to zero. Means uh, sigma equal to zero. So we have found a result which everybody knows. When a body is broken in two, there is no axial forces between the two parts of the body. Hmm? But uh, what seems to be a uh, obvious engineering facts uh, here is deduced from the minimization. Okay? So uh, we have a, a first result which says that if I have a configuration with jumps, uh, because I, I, have to, I must have at least one jump to place uh, this eta on that point, then the force is zero. So in every equilibrium configuration with jumps, the force is zero. Okay. What happens in a configuration without jumps? In a configuration without jumps, this uh, uh, number of u is equal to zero. So we have here, instead of this term, I write it here, I have gamma multiplied the number of jumps of eta from here and here I have zero. Hmm? So in this case, I have uh, that this difference is equal to minus W prime of U prime times the amplitude of the jumps of eta plus gamma number of jumps of eta. Okay, so if I take uh, a configuration with jumps, a uh, perturbed configuration, perturbation with jumps, here I have something which is greater than gamma, which is equal to gamma if I have just a perturbation, and this is arbitrarily small. Hmm? So uh, what can I deduce? I deduce this. If I uh, consider now uh, I, had, uh, I already drew conclusions about uh, configurations with one jump. Hmm? If I take a configuration without jumps, I, know, uh, I already know from the preceding exercise that we did that among configurations uh, without jumps, the minimum is attained by the homogeneous configurations. So I can consider, instead of an arbitrary u, I, I can consider the homogeneous configuration u over beta. Hmm? And here I, I can put the uh, prime over beta. So for this configuration, this configuration is already a minimum among all configurations we ha uh, which, are not, uh, which have no jumps. For configuration with jumps, I have this inequality. Hmm? This inequality means that I have a gamma which is finite, and here I, I have something which is small, and this is positive, 
unless I take a very big perturbations. Hmm? What means this? This means that this is a local minimum. Hmm? This is a local minimum because uh, if I take uh, this quantity, is, uh, which I can write, uh, which an, uh, the number of beta is greater than one, which an, I can write this way, is greater than zero for every eta greater than a, a quantity which is uh, uh, gamma over w prime over two prime or a sigma. Hmm? Okay. So uh, for uh, um, if I take the amplitude of eta and I will be more precise in a moment, a measure of the distance between the two configurations. Okay. Uh, this uh, configu uh, uni uh, homogeneous configuration is a minimum um, uh, among all perturbed configurations which are sufficiently close to this uh, u-beta. And sufficiently close means uh, that uh, the jumps uh, are not larger than a given uh, number. Okay? So I have this double, mm, this double uh, conclusion. Uh, said about the local minimum and, th and this is true. a particular but uh, uh, we will find it you will find it on the notes somehow I don't know. Uh, okay so we can conclude the following that there are two types of equilibrium configurations uh, okay mm. one equilibrium configuration is that uh, mm, is a configuration mm, with, uh, uh, without jumps and uh, homogeneous with the value beta. The other equilibrium configuration is uh, u, prime, uh, u prime equal to zero and the number of jumps greater than zero. So we have uh, two types of configuration. One is uh, the unfactored configuration and one uh, are the factored configurations. So unfactored, a factored configuration. And it is easy to evaluate the energy of these configurations because Dunque, uh, here I plot the energy versus beta. For the first uh, unfractured configuration, I simply have that the energy is L W of beta. And for the second configuration, this is zero, so I have gamma multiplied as the number of the factors. So this is the, this is the, uh, the energy plot. Uh, so, the, in the first case, uh, we have a convex function. 
say, for instance, a parabola. So this is uh, the case in which the number of the, of the jumps is equal to zero. And then uh, we have all the energies with the number of jumps equal to one, two, three, and so on. So in this diagram, I, I have all the equilibrium configurations. Okay? And now uh, a very interesting fact comes. So one says, uh, the question is where, when will the, um, uh, the body break? Let's start from beta equal to zero. From beta equal to zero, it is clear that the global minimum of the energy is here. And this lasts up to here. So, but here we have a change of the global minimum. And uh, so one says, OK, the, the body breaks, makes just a one discontinuity. And we go on on this, uh, on this uh, uh, line. So we have a factor of configuration up to this value, which is obtained just equating the two energies. And then I have the rupture. OK, so this conclusion that uh, I told you now is a big mistake because it is not so. It is absolutely not so because uh, uh, this uh, graph that I did, uh, that I made to you, is deceiving. Hmm? Uh, you put it to a wrong conclusion. And uh, this is a very deep point which uh, will affect uh, wh all what we will do in the following. And this, is, uh, this concerns uh, the definition of a configuration and, uh, and of a local minimum. So as I said before informally, what is a local minimum? Uh, in terms uh, of a classical calculus of variation, means uh, a uh, u is a local minimum if there is a delta, there is a delta positive such that this inequality holds for all perturbation eta with norm of eta less than delta. That is, I take a configuration u I take a sphere or a radius delta. If it is a minimum inside the sphere, uh, it is a local minimum. But the point is what is, is a sphere? Because uh, generally, you, uh, we are in an infinite dimensional space. And uh, we know that in, in an infinite dimensional space, the norms are not equivalent. So we have to define a norm to uh, give value to this inequality. We have to say precisely what is uh, this norm of eta. And there are uh, several choices. Uh, they are not uh, all equivalent. So we must be very careful in which choice uh, we are taking. And uh, because we are in the presence of discontinuities, functions with discontinuity, discontinuities, we cannot choose a Sobolev norm, for instance, H1 which essentially in one dimension deals with continuous function, which uh, we have to choose a norm which uh, accounts for the presence of discontinuities. So the choice which seems the best to me is uh, to take uh, as the norm of eta what is called the total variation, which is, uh, which is related to the PV norm. Yes. Exactly. First, uh, you have to define the norm and uh, to say uh, which is the distance between the points on this uh, line and on this line. Because uh, they seem to be coincident in this picture, but this is not true. So, uh, the norm of the total variation is something like that.
I take the LU norm, the L1 norm, and I add. the sum of the absolute values of the jumps. In our case, the jumps because we are supposing them to be positive. Problems? Uh, it, yes, not you, okay. This is, okay, this is easy. Uh, other problems? Okay. So uh, we choose this norm. And uh, we simply evaluate the distance of these two points, I mean of this point from this point. And this is very easy eh? because distance of uh, u beta uh, minus, uh, let me call it uh, u1, this uh, avec, uh, no, uh, the number equal to 1 because the others are not important. Minus u1, this norm, is equal to the integral of u, uh, mm, w, uh, um, pardon, of u prime beta minus u prime of this, which is zero. Hmm? So this way, uh, plus, this, uh, the difference of the jumps, but uh, this has no jumps, and this has one jump. So uh, plus uh, um, the jump of u1. And this is strictly positive because this is positive and this is positive. So we are comparing uh, two configurations which are far away in the configuration space endowed with that norm. So, uh, we are in two points which, if, uh, which is far away, and I have to show uh, if uh, there is a, this switching uh, of the minima when I come to this point, these two points uh, must be accessible from each other. So, I have a picture here to show you about this. Oh, a series of the slides. In the lecture notes, uh, I was not able to put all the figures, but the figures are given separately. And uh, we begin. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, twice the jump for the distance. No, because uh, you, you, uh, you uh, no, uh, because uh, you take the difference and the difference is uh, something like that. Is something like that the difference. So you pay for two. No. Uh, this is just mathematical definition of the distance of two functions. If you? Yeah, but I am using this simply. That if you prime, you don't have jumps, simply, if you make the minimization. So I just consider this quarter of the, of the plane, okay? Rimetti, per favore, la Okay, faccio io. Okay, grazie. So, this is uh, the picture of this function. Hmm? So you see there is uh, a, a green line here, which, uh, because this is zero. Huh? This uh, green line that you've uh, seen in the foreground is just uh, the energy here. Then you have a jump which is equal to gamma, this vertical wall, huh? and then you have uh, this function W over prime plus gamma. Okay, so you have uh, a regular surface, but uh, at uh, a jump of u equal to zero, you can have a line below. Okay, so if uh, we look at uh, the boundary condition, 
uh, I used it here, but the boundary condition was integral of u prime plus the sum of the jumps of u equal to beta L. Okay? Uh, in the present context, we have L u prime plus u, which is just one, equal to beta L. Or if you wish, u prime plus one over the jump of u equal to beta. And this is uh, the equation of a line here, of a straight line, okay? This type. For jump of u equals uh, to zero, you have u prime equal to beta, and here you have beta L, and the slope is min minus one over L, okay? So, uh, what happens? We can imagine uh, an evolution in which you start from beta equal to zero, and then you move with these lines which are parallel, move parallel, uh, 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 keeping always the same slope. Okay? When beta is small, we are on that uh, green line, which is the global minimum. And uh, after a while, we arrive at the point, okay, so this is the, the line of the load, we arrive at the point at which the global minimum goes on the other half line. So it goes from here to here, okay? And uh, here uh, arises the problems of accessibility. So I say that uh, this uh, new global minimum is accessible if starting from the old minimum, which is here, and keeping the same beta because beta is known, I can go from here to here with a decreasing energy. If I don't uh, have, uh, if the energy is not in, uh, decreasing, I have an energy barrier which I cannot overcome if I don't supply energy from the exterior. Okay? So, uh, what happens? Up to this moment, up to this beta, the global minimum was here. And we were before the cross point of the first diagram. Hmm? When we come here, the global minimum is here, but if I wish to go from here to here, I have a wall, an energy barrier. I, I cannot go there. If uh, uh, I uh, supply some energy, for instance, with a hammer, maybe I can jump this barrier, and then I can go down up to the new configuration, and the new equilibrium configuration is broken. Okay? So this is, but if I don't uh, do give this extra energy, I cannot uh, leave this uh, line. So one of the uh, unfavorable points of the theory of Griffith, which we are examining here, is that you can never leave this line because, uh, la, because uh, you have this energy barrier. So, and this has been recognized, uh, uh, this uh, approach, variational approach to uh, fracture uh, started with uh, Marigot and Frank Fall in 1998, and uh, they immediately recognized that uh, the Griffith approach cannot uh, establish uh, the onset of, of fracture. The Griffith analysis, as Griffith correctly did in uh, 1920, can just examine the body uh, already fractured in more than one dimension, because in one dimension the fracture is uh, trivial, it's just one point, but in more than one dimension you have a fracture line, and you can predict when the fracture line can advance and when it uh, stays stable. But you cannot take an unfractured body and predict when this body will fracture. So uh, this is uh, uh, a, a negative aspect of this, uh, of this approach, which means that uh, this functional is too poor to uh, analyze deeply some fundamental aspect of fracture. We have to improve it in some way. And this will be the object of the next uh, lectures, lecture, in which, uh, oh, okay, this is just a picture of what an energy barrier is. It is just a, you have this water in the lake, which is uh, in equilibrium, perfect equilibrium, but this is not a stable equilibrium. This is not a global minimum for the water. Global minimum is when the water goes into the sea. 
but this is metastable equilibrium. And to destroy it, you need, uh, for instance, to blow up this uh, wall, which is this energy barrier, which forbids the water. But as, as soon as you don't do this, the water will stay there. And, uh, eh? Yes, of course. You, you, do, you, you have to do something. And uh, this is, uh, yeah, please. Yeah. Metastable means a local minimum, in the sense that uh, I defined before. When I say stable, means a global minimum. Metastable means a local minimum. So this is a local minimum because if I do a small perturbation, I keep the equilibrium. I need a big perturbation to go to the, to the global minimum. No, no. Uh, so, uh, uh, as I was saying, uh, this is a fortune because uh, if I have an object like this and I pull this object, uh, maybe that uh, if I pull it sufficiently, the energy of the broken uh, object uh, would be less than the, the energy that I'm giving him, but he doesn't know because he is in metastable equilibrium. Otherwise, we would live, uh, live in a world of broken objects, okay? No. A lower energy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 for this model, yes, yeah. Could be less, yes, could be less, but, uh, but this is not important. What is important is uh, which is the energy barrier, if there is an energy barrier in the elastic. Uh, if there is no energy barrier, you can, uh, in, in fact, uh, we will see in the next lecture uh, a more refined model in which uh, you can have a prediction of the onset of fracture and uh, we will tell you exactly when this happens. Uh, okay, this is uh, my last picture and then I will finish for today. The idea is uh, very stupid from the viewpoint of mathematics because since uh, this uh, um, the, uh, amount of discontinuity is important in spite of the fact that it, it doesn't appear here, we can imagine to put this energy term, uh, okay, let me call E2 now, this is second term, as a function of the crack opening. And we have a very strange function because this function is zero here, and then it jumps to gamma, it stays equal to gamma together. To, uh, forever, okay? So we have this behavior. Uh, there is a discontinuity here. So the most uh, stupid idea uh, that you may have is just to regularize this function, to make something like that. So to say that uh, the energy is not spent exactly at the moment of the rupture, but uh, is spent uh, slowly, eh? there is uh, some process of rupture in which the energy uh, increases up to the limit value. And there were two models made by engineering, engineers, one in the uh, United States and one in the Soviet Union uh, around the 1960, that, uh, that means 40 years after Griffith. And uh, D is uh, Dugdale. And B is Barenblatt. Which uh, were both working for the army of respective countries, so they didn't care about uh, mathematical analysis of the subject. But essentially, what they did was that regularization. Now, they took uh, an energy of this type, as uh, you see from the picture, and Barenblatt is something more regular. Uh, we will see that this simple regularization will give a, an extremely richer model, which will answer many uh, um, questions which are unanswered with the Griffith model. And I stop here. <laughs>